So you're saying uh, that you put up the LSUSB uh, input, and that was uh, one D one eight D one. All right. So uh, the we're going to do a teardown of the Samsung Gear Live. I've already unboxed the unit. Got it right here. It's charging. And interestingly, I've heard rumors that this device can't connect up USB, but that's not true. It's just simply missing the connections uh, for uh, the, the, the ADB to connect up. It's just missing the entries in the ADB USB.ini file. And so what I've done is uh, just simply loaded casual onto this computer here, and it just directly connected right up. Uh, so that's a little tip for you. If you're trying to get ADB on the Samsung Gear Live, you can, and it's pretty easily. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on this teardown here. Uh, uh, Keith Myers, uh, are you there? I'm here. All right. Uh, hey, Keith, uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm just an Android enthusiast. Uh, been playing with Android since uh, since my Evo 4G L, uh, on Sprint, the original Evo. And pretty much been buying every Android device I can find since. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? <laughs> you got that uh, the uh, the Google Glass. Now uh, you also have one of the Motorola devices, right? Is that correct? No, I don't. No, I have the uh, LG G Watch. I don't have any Motorola devices on me. Hmm. Okay, uh, but you have the LG G Watch, though. Uh, how does that compare to Google Glass as far as their card experience goes? They do a lot of the same things in different ways. Um, for example, Glass, you can start a Hangout on, whereas on the LG G Watch, you can't. Uh, when I go into a meeting, I normally leave these off my head, uh, but the watch is just great. Uh, battery life, they're about the same. <laughs> So. And uh, the, supposedly that uh, that G Watch has about a two day battery life, whereas the Live only has one. Mm, I wouldn't say two days. It's a uh, hundred milliamps more. So um, in real world use, it may get you another hour or two, but it just depends on your usage patterns. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. Uh, we'll go ahead and reposition this camera around and. I'll get this recording set up uh, ready here. So if you guys are ready for a little bit of vertigo action. There we go. And hopefully I can get this thing around without unplugging it. All right. How's that look? I guess that looks all right. Yep. And we're going to start by unboxing the cat. As you can see, Marshmallow here has uh, decided to join us for the unboxing, and uh, Marshmallow is laying in the wrong spot. So come on, kitty. You're not helping. You need to go. Another you know, one, though. Just use a plastic sponge on the cat. <laughs> little... Uh, let me take care of this cat really quick. I'm going to get her out of here. All right. So it looks like it's just uh, you, me, the camera, the watch, and uh, some silent people. So silent people over there. You guys, uh, you guys around at all? Looks like they're not around. Let's take a quick look here. Oh, Jason. Here. Perry. Yep. Jason and Perry, you guys are around? I'm on that, my uh, Jason phone. or Perry? Jason. Ah, okay. Yeah, cell phones don't make for the best camera devices, that's for sure. Well, you just don't want to see my ugly mug. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> So, getting things ready here, and I believe this is the right, no, this is the wrong screwdriver. We're going to need a Torx T5 screwdriver. And I have no idea how to turn this watch off, actually. Um, 
Yeah, just set it on the cradle for a couple seconds. Well, that doesn't seem to work. Let's try it, see what happens. Okay, so it's on the cradle. It's on. By the way, that's a fun fact about the LG G Watch. There is no power button on it. Hmm. In the menus, if you dig deep enough, there's an option to turn it off, but there's no way to turn it back on until you set it on the cradle. Oh, jeez. I made that mistake when I was doing uh, something work on my car a couple days ago. So I had to wait until I got home to turn it back on. So if you accidentally turn it off, you've basically got nothing you can do, huh? You're stuck. I think I'm going to you can hold down the button for a couple seconds, which this will be the one time I'll give Samsung credit for putting a button on there. Yeah. <laughs> Samsung, those ding buttons. Um, Adam, one thing that's worth noting, a lot of people have been complaining about the uh, charging mechanism for the uh, Samsung breaking on them. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, apparently, the charging mechanism uh, damages the watch if you put it on or take it off wrong or something. Not really sure. I'm not really seeing a problem. It looks like it should be sturdy. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we also don't know anything about what those people were doing with it as well. I mean... Um, not saying that you know they're they're using it abnormally or anything, but you know uh, I do work a lot with uh, uh, plastic in my line of work in a hospital uh, biomedical equipment technician, and I, what I see a lot of the times is uh, people will uh, wash things down with uh, types of chemicals that will make uh, make plastic more brittle. And what ends up happening is uh, things chip and break where they're not supposed to when the plastic becomes more brittle. Uh, whereas, you know, basically this, this whole mechanism here is designed around uh, the movement of the plastic to conform to the watch. And once it becomes more brittle, of course, it won't move. It'll just kind of snap off. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, until I see it for myself. I won't be able to really comment on it. We're going to have to get a lot more data, I think. That could also just be a one specific production run. Yeah, it could be. So I'm going to try this. I don't know if I turn the off or not. It appears to. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so we can turn it off like that. All right, so uh, what I'm going to have to do is uh, mute out for a second. Uh, here, once this device boots back up, there we go. I'm going to mute out and uh, do a little uh, talk on the other camera that I have here, and then we'll be back. <coughs>
Alright guys, so uh, we're ready to do this and I'm just getting another camera ready. I've got to have my little wheelie camera here. While I'm doing teardowns, you know, I like to get some better angles here with this uh, Samsung Galaxy camera here. I didn't notice the amount of on wheels. All right, so it looks like we're going to start. <coughs> All right, so yeah. All right, so we'll start by removing the watch band. If we can get in there. And it's just a little hook that you can pull with your finger and get the watch band to disconnect. I suppose using a tool might be a little bit easier. Oh, looks like we're going to move on to using a tool. How about some tweezers? And then we can move, remove for I believe it's Torx T5. Yep. Now we can remove four Torx T5 screws securing the back panel to the unit. You know, I don't think camera... Uh, can you hear that thing going on in the background? The <laughs> Samsung whistle? Yeah, I do. That's my camera. I don't think cameras should be allowed to do that. I think that cameras should be quiet at all times unless you're playing a video. Yeah, you know? <laughs> That's why you don't install touch with on a camera. Yeah, yeah. Just a heads up, Adam, those screws are non magnetic. I see that. Oh, I don't see that <laughs> actually, but they are uh, they are wanting to roll around on me quite a bit. No. And now we'll use a guitar pick to separate the front from the back. What's that about showing feet? I don't want to break this thing, but it does feel like there's quite a bit of resistance. Hey, uh... Daddy, look. It's a little ninja. Dan, I'm muting you. You should probably mute yourself if you're not talking.
Um, Adam, you won't break it if you try to force it. All right. Well, let's just force it open. There we go. I usually like to use a more delicate force, but apparently on this device, you really have to give it some force to open it up. So on the back panel, it appears to be uh, some hookups for the battery and uh, the heart rate monitor. No. These are the USB ports right here. And then we have the battery coming off the side. There's a lot of connectors in the back here. I'm not really sure what all of these are used for. Is there wireless charging on this device? There is not. No. Uh, let's see here. And it's just somewhat odd because there's so many connectors and uh, not many, there, not many features. So one of those connectors is for the uh, the antennas. It does have ah. a Wi-Fi antenna. However, it's not. There's no Wi-Fi uh, chip in there. Okay, so we've got a connector for a button, an antenna, uh, the battery, USB, and hmm, maybe ground. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. Well, one thing All right. Know, out of liquid uh, detection or detectors in there. Yeah, uh, liquid detectors, huh? Yep, for something that's supposed to be waterproof. Yeah. Let's go ahead and test them out. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, test this little water detector here. And uh, I've got it wet, but it's not really turning. It seems, actually, it seems like it's turning white, almost. Uh, it's kind of turning pink. Yeah, okay. So we'll say that water detector actually is functional in there. <coughs> hmm. All right. So moving on. Okay. So in uh, the the gear, there's a really, really tiny circuit board. I mean, I don't know if that's focusing very well or not, but it's really tiny. So you have to get under the battery to see the circuit board. <laughs> It's a lot bigger. This is the circuit board. Where? There's a. So you have to pull off the battery. Mm hmm. I'm actually cheating and looking at iFixit. Um, there's a ribbon cable attaching the battery to the board right below. I don't see a battery on or a board. No, no, actually, a battery. Never mind, you got it. You got it. That's what I was for. Hmm. Sorry, I have my okay. one hand on the uh, YouTube screen, which is delayed by a couple seconds. <laughs> so it here. appears that we'll just remove these two uh, connectors. And the board should just come right out. And there we go. Huh. <laughs> that is the main board for the unit. That's uh, small. <laughs> Isn't it? 
Oh my goodness, that is ridiculously small. Let's take a look underneath the heat shield. Or EM shield. I suppose it could be either or both. I don't know at this point. See, people ask me uh, what they should do if they wanted to do a video uh, about tearing things down. And I tell them they should have their tools ready. <laughs> and here I am, digging for tools. <laughs> and hopefully this uh, will come up. Okay, that is well. Uh, my dug on pick here is too small. I'm gonna have to get a needle to get under this, or too big rather. It is extremely micro sized. At first, I didn't think we were going to use the microscope, but I think in order to get a shot, we're going to have to use it. Okay, so here we have the light sensor, and I'll get a good fix on this. So uh, this is the heart rate monitor on the device. We can't really see much of anything except that it has a light sensor on it. Um, a few connections. And let's take a look at the board itself. Can you see that at all? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's a little fuzzy. Yeah, it's showing up fuzzy on my side uh, in in the Hangout, but on the all right, actual so that, video, it's not. So that, Let me is, see if I can... that is uh, the BCM four three three four W Bluetooth uh, receiver. All right. I'm going to see if I can up the quality somehow of my uh, Mac that I'm using. How do you uh, how do you up the quality of a video? I know I've seen that option before where you can say I want to send high quality video. Um, where is it? It's not the lunchbox. I don't think it is. Um, you used to be a little smarter. What does it do? We need higher quality video for sure for this. I don't know where they moved it. Oh, adjust bandwidth usage. Just put it on auto HD. Or put it on auto HD. Where is that? Um, if you look at the very top of the Hangout, Mm -hmm. There's the uh, mute microphone, turn camera off, adjust bandwidth usage. Set that up to the highest. Okay, there we go. Well, darn, it already is, was at the highest. 
There we go. I turned it down and turned it back up. It should be a little bit clearer now. Uh, so that's yeah, upside down. Yeah, that's a little better. Hmm. It appears that uh, I have to keep on switching it around. Well, doggone. <laughs> Google isn't playing nice with Macs, I guess. It was like you'd think they were opposing each other or something. Hmm. There we go. We got it. It was looking perfect for a second and then it just went away. There we go. Samsung K. MF5X0005A. That is my phone called makes of DRAM. And the uh, Qualcomm SOC underneath. Underneath it's a uh, dual layer? Yeah. That's the uh, AP, APQ8026 uh, uh, SOC. Yep, it certainly is. Actually, it almost looks like it's uh, a triple layer circuit board. I don't know. I've never seen that configuration before. Maybe it is dual layer. Looking at it from this side, it looks a little bit different. Interesting. And then uh, over here, we've got one more board. Uh, one more chip, rather. It's really blurry, so... Let's see if I can fool it into uh, adjusting the clarity again. Uh, can you read off the numbers on it? I'm trying to get it so that it's clear. See, the thing is, uh, Hangouts makes it backwards on my screen, so I've either got backwards or low quality. <laughs> uh, if you go into the Hangout toolbox, you can actually get it. Hang it. Is that the lunchbox? Yep. All right. It's under... Um, uh, where is it? Uh, I can see it now. One second. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing it under there. That's the PM8226. That is the Qualcomm Power Management IC. All right. And hopefully we can get this one. That is a QR code. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, turning off the lights helps. External light sources tend to interfere with the ability to get a clear image on this. Nope. Thanks to Hangouts, I can't read this thing uh, because it is inverted. Anyone know how to invert Hangouts? All right, so this is this says uh, PM eight 
two two six on it. Oh, hey Adam. Yes. Go on to the Hangouts. Click on the Hangout toolbox. Right under yeah. lower third, there's a little button. Um, or right next to lower third, there's a button next to the on-off switch for uh, putting the little tagline called Mirror Local Video. Okay. That will not the video. There we go. So I got that. But wait, no, it's still mirrored. Darn it. There we go. All right. Squared away. Squared away now. All right, so we got the uh, EMMC and the PM chip. Now we were going after the small one right here. I wanted to see what that one was. Um, and we got it upside down, and uh, it looks like W979A1. What do you see on that? Um, can you uh, get out one okay? Can I do what? What did you ask for, Keith? Can you read that number out to me one more time? W979A1. I am not finding anything on that. <laughs> All right, how about 1413? One, 1413. Read, uh, read it out the whole thing again one more time. So we got W979A1. I'm changing up the contrast here so I can see it better. Uh, 1413. Nothing. I am not finding anything on that. That's interesting. Hmm. All right, so it appears to be a pretty power-hungry chip. Uh, as you can see here, it does definitely have a lot of power connected up to it. And uh, they uh, appeared to have created quite a large rail with many connections just to, I guess, for capacitors or resistors to make sure that it keeps the amount of power it needs. Not really sure what's going on there. Um, hmm. All right. Well, um, what was that? Someone has their vibrator right next to their phone, huh? Their, their microphone. All right, so uh, looks like we're good to go on that. Let's go ahead and switch back to normal mode. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I think I may have figured it out. That's your 9-axis accelerometer. Ah! Yeah, there okay. you go. All right. And compass. So uh, we'll go ahead and put this thing back together, but I do need to uh, change the setting here because I think I'm out of uh, I think I'm out of recording time on my camera. There we go. Switch back to memory card. There we go. Huh. 
All right, so I guess it's time for me to do a little bit of a board summary. Um, I'm going to put you guys on, uh, on pause for just a minute. I'll talk to my other camera. And I'll... All right, so now I need to get some B-roll of this camera here, of this, uh, the, the, the board here. And this is going to be interesting as to how I'm going to be able to pull this off because this is such a small target. It's not really going to be easy to get the camera right where I want it. Now for the sensor. I need to get the back of that same board. I forgot to do that. The inside of the back case. Inside of here. That's real shiny. That has a lot of shine to it. Uh, I'm also seeing what appears to be NFC antenna. Is that is that a thing on this device? It's not. It, it's weird because um, the Bluetooth controller is also. Technically, it's a Wi-Fi radio and an FM radio, and none of those are are active. Uh, a feature, technically. Maybe it's not a Bluetooth, or maybe it's not a maybe it's not the type of antenna. Maybe it's just a padding in a circular form. 
Yeah, maybe that that's probably what that is. That's just a padding. Uh, it appears to go any it appears that in order to go any further, we're going to need to remove the screen and I'm not too keen on doing that on this, so we're going to call this good to go. I don't want a damaged device uh, with you know, uh, during a unboxing tear down. See, the thing I like about Samsung devices is uh, usually you can tear them down completely and rebuild them and not have really any risk of damaging the equipment. You can't say that about most manufacturers out there. Uh, they really put uh, durability and repairability up first. And that's a quality I admire. I don't like the fact that they actively lock out our kind, the enthusiasts who want to flash software and do our own thing with our devices, not using the way Samsung intended them to be used. Well, it looks like what they did was they took the same board that they're using for other devices. Uh, yeah, uh, apparently it's about the same size and shape overall as the uh, the Gear 2 from what I've seen and heard. But interestingly, the Gear 2 uses a Exynos processor, whereas this uses a Snapdragon 400 processor. It's possible uh, we might see another Samsung Tizen watch come out in the future with some of those new features, with some of those uh, things on. Yeah, the Snapdragon 400. Mm -hmm. Of course, that really doesn't sound like something Samsung would do. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was reading, reading today that Sam, uh, Google's getting pretty pissed off at Samsung because they're having a lot of uh, meetings behind the scenes or something. I think it was on Android Authority. I'm not really sure. But uh, apparently uh, they are not appreciative of the fact that Samsung is putting so much research into their own operating system and not embracing Android as they should, which there's nothing wrong with that, but... You know, uh, apparently Google just doesn't like it, being that Samsung is their number one manufacturer devices. Yeah, I, I can see that kind of making Google a little concerned. Um, if by some weird stroke of luck, Samsung outgrows Google. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could see that happening. Uh, if everyone is using Samsung products, but I don't know. Samsung is a very diversified company, and mobile is just one thing they do. Yeah, but it's uh, something that they're banking really big on right now. Right now. Yeah, if they want me to buy the Note 4, they better do what they're supposed to do. What are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? Let me run Android L on it. <laughs> Kill break and do what I want. Yeah. Someone's got an echo going Someone's on. Someone's got an echo going on. Probably me. Yeah, it's you. Yeah, it's you. All right, so just about finished putting this thing back together. We'll get started on the USB portion of this. Pretty much the rest of the time, this watch is going to be hooked up to a USB connection. So I probably should have saved it for on camera and all, but I just couldn't resist uh, because when I was 
reading about this watch, I saw many people talking about how it had to be connected up through Bluetooth in order to get a, uh, a good connection with ADB on this. Uh, so I had to test it out and see if that was actually the case. Uh, turns out that you can actually get a USB connection on this watch without having to use, uh, you can actually get an ADB connection without having to use Bluetooth. Yeah, I'm not sure where that started because you should have always been able to use USB. Uh, in fact, even in the, uh, in the uh, actually, let me double check that before I say it for sure. Uh -huh. Oh, it just says ADB, ADB debugging, um, but um, you know, you're supposed to always have had Bluetooth access. I don't. I'm sorry, uh, sorry. ADB over. Uh, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that was weird too. But if that's the case, I mean, we're still prepared for that. It would be a shock if it were just charge only. I mean, I, I don't see that even being a possibility. Well, I heard uh, someone saying it was like a hardware limitation of the device or something. And it, it could very well be that uh, it won't work with normal US, it won't work with normal ADB uh, until you load up the proper ADB USB dot INI, That's which like is very feasible. All right. Make sure that everything connects up, everything does what it's supposed to. And although I put these things on, I think I'm just going to take them right back off. Uh, it makes a little bit more sense since this is going to be working with, being worked with on a desk that uh, we don't have the bands on it that just make it fall over and do all kinds of silly stuff all the time. All right, so it appears everything's still working fine. Um, I haven't heard any sound coming from this device. It has a mute. Um, yeah. None of the uh, Samsung... Uh, I'm sorry, none of the Android Wear devices have speakers. Okay. It just stops the notifications. So it'll stop it from vibrating. It's kind of a okay. way to squeeze out extra battery life. Um. <laughs> but no, it doesn't mute its audio. It's, uh, it, the name is very misleading. All right. Uh, I am going to take a quick little five-minute break, and uh, we'll be back. We'll get started on uh, getting a kernel ready for this device. I'm hoping that uh, we can use something that's already been looked at in the past. Actually, you know what? Actually, it seems like a little bit of a better idea if we go ahead and we check this thing out right now uh, before I take a little break. Uh, what I'm going to do is open up a terminal, get you guys in here with the terminal, and I need to screen share this. Did you happen to notice a uh, UART? I didn't notice UART on there at all. I didn't see anything that could be used directly. Uh, but I'm going to still test over using the uh, using the USB connection. And thank you for reminding me about that. I am going to have to tear this thing apart again later on. But I didn't see anything that really occurred to me right offhand. I'm looking at the iFixit schematics. Uh, I'm not seeing anything there either. I was just wondering if you uh, caught something. All right, so we'll do an ADB reboot bootloader on this. Device. I've already turned on ADB debugging. Okay, so uh, this is kind of weird about this device, and I don't know if any uh, you guys, well, you probably know already since you already have one of these. But uh, in order to, uh, let me turn off screen share. All right, so in order to use ADB on this device, you've got to uh, initi initiate the command, and the authentication actually pops up on your uh, phone when you connect it up. 
So let's try that again. Do that. ADB reboot bootloader. And let's try that. ADB kill server. ADB start server. ADB shell. And it's saying the device is offline. I didn't notice a pop. Alright, now you're making me go grab my USB cable again. It's telling me the device is offline, and I was able to get this working earlier. Uh, ADB devices. Alright, so I see the serial number of my device. Uh, someone was helpful enough on, uh, hold on, I just got a message here from someone, I have no idea who it was from, they said uh, you have to be in the companion app, so we'll open up the companion app, Android Wear, hit back. ADB shell. Well, that didn't seem to do it. Oh wow! I got. I'm getting it on mine, Adam. All right, so there we go. Yeah. You have to have the companion app open, and then it works just fine. Make sure your debug over Bluetooth is also on. Um. What's what's that going to be used for? So go into the uh, ADB. I'm sorry. Go into settings on Android Wear. Yeah. Enable USB debugging. And underneath the USB debugging, there's an option for Bluetooth debugging. Oh, cute. The name is Dory. <laughs> All right. So I'm getting messages from uh, Dee's Troy, and he says. Uh, he might be coming into the chat room. Hopefully he will. I would absolutely love it because the goal is to get TWRP running on this sucker tonight. All right, so we're in the device, and we'll go uh, CD slash system, and then we can do cat build prop. And here we have the build prop from this unit. So take a look and we're looking for the MSM two MSM eight two two six and now we need to take that I was talking to D's earlier and he gave me this idea so we can just do MSM eight two two six on a Google search. We'll bring that over here and you guys can see the Google search window. Uh and Yep, we'll do on the Wikipedia. Just so you know, the G Watch is from the exact same. The G Watch. Yep. Uh, okay. Well, that's great. Um, eight two two six. I'm just uh, looking for a complete list of devices here, and here we have it at the top, 8226. We got the Moto G 8 gigabyte, uh, Moto G Dual 8 gigabyte, Moto G Dual. A lot of Moto G devices. Uh, all right, there we go. Sony Xperia, Nokia Lumina. Ace Pad Phone Mini. That's a lot of feedback. From me? Not sure. I'm not hearing it on my end, so it might just very well be me. Everything's gone now. All right. Well, that's good. All right, so you said the which watch was it? The LG G watch. 
All right, so let's go to TWRP. Dot, no, we, we need team. Dot win. And we need to search for that G-Watch. While you're at it, you may want to unlock the bootloader. Yeah. Uh, just unlock twice. Okay, we don't have a G-Watch. No worries. Let's uh, go ahead and do this. I'll pick a device here. Do you see any of these in here that look enticing? That might look might be similar. I don't think so. I guess uh, going with the Samsung device would be the best idea. Oh. Uh, wow. If I were to choose one of those, um, I would actually say the Moto G. The Moto G, huh? Mm -hmm. Moto G colors. Moto G 8 gigabyte. Hmm. Okay. We'll try it. Moto G. So basically what we need to do is we need to – let me, let, me, let me explain the whole thing, what we're doing here. Uh, we need to get root access to this device, all right? And the way we're going to do that, we're going to use TeamWin Recovery as a tool to get root access to the device. And then uh, once we get root access, we can pull the recovery and then recompile another one. Uh, well, we can – well, not recompile, but uh, repack another one is the proper term. Motorola G. Tecarata is not the fastest site. Alright, so I guess uh, only one thing left to do. We'll go ahead and see if we can just go ahead and EDB reboot into the bootloader. Hello. <laughs> okay, the ADB reboot bootloader. And we're rebooting, and here we go. We're into the bootloader here. So, how do we select something? Uh, it should be okay, so, by swiping down, we pick a new item. I guess you hit the button to do something else. All right, so we want fast boot. I believe swipe uh, left to right to. Oh, there we go. We are in fast boot mode now. Well, it said fast boot mode, but then the screen went black. Ah, drat! I hit the start button. Sorry, it doesn't take very long for this device. That's what impressed me. It actually boots up fairly quickly. All right. And we should just go bam. Come on. Go bam. It does what it's told. 
Okay, there we go. So now we're back in. We can do fast boot. I'm not sure if I already selected it or not. It could be a slow UI. Well, it could right, also be. Give me the screen space to get blank. Ah, oh, darn it. So it goes into fast boot mode, and then it comes right out of fast boot mode. So let's get a command ready. ADB, or no, we need sudo fast boot OEM unlock. All right, wiping user data, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, good deal. We'll just do that one more time just to be sure. And once again. Okay, uh, I'm going to look something up really quick on XDA developers from a previous thread. Uh, I wrote down some Qualcomm OEM commands for a different device, and what I'm going to do is go reference that. And I just have problems remembering these fast boot commands. I just don't use them enough. I usually use them once, and then I'm done with them for a while. Just the fast boot get far, and uh, tons of things you can do with that. Add phone X root is what I called it. And down near the bottom. All right, so fast boot get ver product. And there was a few others, too. There's a few for getting the IMEI number and the SIM, or in the, uh, uh, ESNs and that kind of thing, too. So there was, uh, enable UART or UART on. UART. This is for a different device, so I'm just trying these out really quick. Device info, that's it. OEM device info. There we go. Uh, let me show you the output from that. There we go. So the uh, this is the Fastboot OEM device info here, and this is unlocked. Charger screen enabled, true. And there, if I could get a hold of the bootloader, we could figure out how to turn off the charger screen and possibly, I don't know, get into something else. Uh, I see that charger screen enabled, and pretty sure that without charger screen enabled, uh, you probably get like some kind of other output rather than charger screen. So next up, a sudo fastboot get there product sprat. All right, uh, and I need. Well, I was hoping to get model, but all it has is product. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get that downloaded TWRP to see if we can get it over to the device. So CD downloads, and we'll do sudo fastboot flash open recovery. Actually, I, would, uh, I wouldn't flash it. I would uh, sudo fastboot boot it. Fastboot boot, yeah. Just in case uh, it... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so one one dash X. There we go. Pseudo fast boot boot open recovery. And there we go. Let's see if that works. 
failed. DTB not found. Deez. What does that mean? All right, so there's something called DTB kernels, all right? And a DTB kernel is packed in, like, a different image format, basically, and it just it annoys the heck out of me. Uh, not really sure what to do, but I do know that we're going to need a different kernel. Unless uh, D somehow manages to make it in here and saves the world. I'm going to invite him right now. All right, there we go. I sent an invite. He might show up. But uh, we're going to go back to uh, Team Wind site and I guess on Wikipedia again. Hello? Hey, how are you doing, Deez? Doing all right. I'm outside with the kids. So uh, we're having a little bit of a problem here with the uh, Team Win actually uh, getting it wor working because as you said, and you called it before, you said it was probably going to be a DTB kernel. Well, it was a DTB right. kernel. Okay. Do you, do you have any idea uh, which of... The Moto G, uh, Samsung Galaxy Grand, or uh, any of these uh, uh, devices that have the same type of kernel, which is the, uh, uh, the the same type of processor rather, which the model number is a Snapdragon 400 8226. We need a DTB kernel, a DTB TWRP. Uh, that well, the, the, the Moto G. Was uh, is a DTB type kernel. We just tried it and it said a uh, DTB failed. Yeah, I probably didn't like the DTB because the DTB is probably for the Moto G and it's like something one for the five. Okay, so does that mean that we're not going to be able to get this thing to boot at all? Uh. Possibly. I can try sometime maybe repacking the Moto G build without a DTB. Sometimes the bootload will extract a DTB from the device and append it on its own when you're using fast boot, boot mode, but I'm not 100% sure if that'll work. I can try unpacking this kernel and then repacking it without a DTB. Um, open recovery. Right. What are you doing? You get you're enjoying stuff, huh? I'm outside with the kids in the front where the street is and the cars are, so I got to keep an eye on them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of picture you always on your computer. Uh, My youngest kinda... is. My youngest is a year and a half, so uh, yeah, I really got to keep an eye on him. So there you go, watch. Say hi, buddy. That's my youngest. Oh, he's a cute one. How old is he, too? Oh, not even. He's 20 months. Say hi. Hi there. Yeah, is that us on the screen? Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it, buddy? <laughs> Chances of using tools that you would use to uh, unpack a regular non-DTB type image and repack it with the same type of tools that will repack it without a DTB, but like I said, it's just kind of a shot in the dark kind of a thing. That's what I'm trying right now. 
So we're going to do a boot image. Dash dash create two image. And then we'll do a dash F and we need the boot image dot config. Do a dash K Z image. You have a whiteboard. Why do you have a whiteboard and a blackboard? The image. Yeah. And then uh, we'll do a dash R RAM disk. In it writ I N I T. All right. So if that worked. This is a non DTB image here, so maybe we can just uh, send it over and hopefully that'll just work. What is that? It's a video call, isn't that cool? Yeah. And who is that? That's me. Want to see you? Well, it looks like that's not going to work. The other thing you can find is that uh, there's an image floating around for the uh, the G Watch that I think just came out a little bit ago. I think Jay Case may have put it out. That's supposed to root the device, and it's just a fast boot bootable image. You could try taking that and using the. Uh, we'd have to repack it probably with a DTB as well, and use the DTB for the G Watch and see if it would boot with that. Now, are you talking about? Adam, you forgot. You, you actually put the wrong uh, image file in there. You're right. You're right, I did. Yep, failed. Uh, it did the same thing. Failed DTB not found. It, hey, uh, Dees, it looks like it's saying there's no DTB on the G, on the Moto G. Mm, I could have sworn it had one, but it's been a. It's not. I don't own that device, so I, I just did it and then was done with it. Sometimes the DTB is appended to the end of the kernel too, so it might still technically have a DTB. It's just not a separate DTB like you need for this particular device. Hmm. Okay, so I guess what we could try is uh, possibly getting a different uh, DTB. Oh. Hmm. Nokia Lumia, Samsung. Does Samsung usually use DTB at all? I don't think so. They do on their newer devices, I think. So maybe the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4? Or. It has to be a Qualcomm device. I don't think they do it on any of their Exynos devices, so I don't know. I'm not sure what CPUs are in their tabs, but a lot of their tabs are Exynos based. Well, these, uh, I'm looking at that page that you sent me to earlier today with the, uh, the model number uh, for the, uh, the Snapdragon 400 series. Um, yeah. Looking here, Asus Padphone E, uh, I don't think you support that one yet on Team I don't Win. think I do. Some may have done it. There's probably at least as many unofficial, unofficially ported devices as there are official, if not more. All right. Headphone E T W R T. Let's see if we can pull something up for that. Like I said, I was now, suggesting uh, that you're getting the the G Watch bootable image and maybe repack that right. with a Tor Pram. You said that Justin Case was involved in that one. I think so. I, I'm not 100% sure. I just saw some people talking about it in one of my LG G3 channels earlier today, I think it was. All right. Uh, well, here's the trust. Look, there's a yeah. image file right there. You put the link in the chat? No, it's in the uh, page. It's in the page. It also might be worth asking, have you tried doing ADP root on the gear live and seeing if it just gives you a rooted shell after that? 
Probably you know, not, I, but actually I haven't. Uh, but we could we could try that. I think I remember somebody saying that the G Watch gave you root with just an old ADB root. That would be pretty weird. I wouldn't expect that at all from from I wouldn't this expect device. It either, but, you know. I will confirm or deny that. Live in and of itself is a little bit of an anomaly just because it's one of the few devices that we've seen from Samsung that supports fast boot. It may be the first Samsung device that's not a Nexus that supports fast boot. Yeah, that would be that would be a bit of an oddity, but um, I'll try that. I seem to have made my watch uh, do a bit of boot looping. What did you do to do that? Yeah, she's oh, out. No. Oh. oh, well. I think she's just over for one of her other lady friends' houses. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, still some time with the kids. So. Everybody needs that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially. By the end of the night, you need a night out with all the kids. <laughs> Well, they're out here playing, which means that they're out of my hair for the most part. But. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, I had that. Uh, is it Ariana? Yes. Yeah, I had that she's out because um, Lucy always... Hey, uh, Dees, I have muted you. Uh, you're being recorded on YouTube right now. And probably can't hear me. You can unmute yourself. Feel free to. I'm out of it. So, uh, not. so I've got to pair up this device again. Because essentially, after doing a fast boot OEM unlock, it is a new device. So, just uh, doing a repairing here. If it's stuck in a boot loop, you might try getting it to boot to recovery and do a factory reset there, because sometimes when you do a fast boot OEM, OEM unlock, it's supposed to wipe the device, but sometimes the wipe doesn't actually end up happening, especially if you end up interrupting the, the first boot after the OEM unlock by trying to fast boot boot another image. Yeah, I don't think that's the problem we're having right here. I think it just needed to refresh itself and boot it a couple of times. I think it was just uh, doing its thing with the cache and whatnot. When they say just a minute, they mean it. It's okay, uh, mate. Yeah, it is. Nice. Is that the uh, Google Play edition or the uh, HTC? Uh, well, it's actually AT&T, but what I did was I went ahead and installed the Google Play edition stuff on it. Sweet. Tell you what, once you go Google Play edition, you can't go back. <laughs> yeah, I prefer Google Play quite a bit over uh, just about any other device out there. Google Play Edition really does uh, bring out a lot of things that I like in the devices. With the exception of the new Motorola devices, I mean, just getting updates to Android within, you know, a couple weeks of the announcement is, is just remarkable. I'm sorry, what was that? I mean, just the fact that you get updates to the latest Android within a couple weeks of it being announced is just... It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
Well, they really do mean just a minute. I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to decide if maybe I should uh, reboot this device and do a factory reset. I think that's what I'm going to do. Well, did it do something now? I don't know how to get into recovery mode on this device. Well, let's give it another minute on just a minute screen and see what happens. Hey, how do you get into recovery on your device? Keith? Uh, to be honest, I haven't, hold on, let me, uh, I haven't tried. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I just I haven't rebooted, or I haven't rooted anywhere. <laughs> I'll root anything else. Uh -huh. Let's see here. I remember reading there was a way to do it, so I'm just finding that. Oh, anyway. Alright, so looks like I found something to reset the device and it's recovery booting. And man, this watch is getting hot. I guess it's been doing a lot of processing. A system that indexes every new site I read, so I'm able to. Uh, okay. So on the LG G Watch, there's a uh, reset thing at the bottom. So on the on the bottom of the watch, there's a uh, reset. Hold that down while. Um, let's see here. Push it down for ten. I don't seconds. think I have a reset. Thing. I don't have a reset thing on here. All right, so let's try this again. Maybe this time just a minute will mean just a minute. I'm going to gonna try uh, pairing this device up again. And it says we're paired, but this one doesn't say we're paired. Try deleting the uh, option in your Bluetooth menu. Leave the device and carry yeah. Good idea. I know that uh, with glass, that, that probably happens once in a while. All right, awesome. So now we're pairing. They really did a good job of making these menus on this device. I, I really like the way the, the look is. It's nice and clean on this wear device. And hopefully this time when they say just a minute, they actually mean just a minute. That last just a minute was uh, entirely too long. There we go. Paired. OK Google. Alright, looks like it's working. So, now to get this thing uh, back into development mode, we need to tap build number a bunch of times. You are now a developer. We got developer options and ADB 
debug enabled. There we go. And let's see if we can ADB root this device. Nope, ADBD cannot run as root in production builds. Oh, it looks like you got a prompt in here. I got what? Oh, never mind. Oh. I can maybe be root it either. Yeah, yeah, well, it's uh, pretty much uh, going to be... <laughs> it's pretty much going to be uh, ADB root cannot run in production builds, you know, uh, whether or not we get an error on the device or not. All right, so I guess we're going to need to get back into fast boot. All right, and what was that file we just downloaded? The LGGW. So you go fast boot. Boot. You probably want to. Uh Back that and you just to root it. Well, yeah, let's get root on this device. We'll be good to go. Right. Remote found. We basically need either root, a copy of the stock recovery, or kernel source. Any of the above would work. If we had kernel source, we would still need to have a stock image because the kernel source wouldn't come with a RAM disk. Odds are a Torp RAM disk would boot up on it just so long as we uh, could get a kernel and DTB to pair with it. All right, so let's do this. Uh, let's do sudo fast boot reboot. Boot, or no, just reboot. We want to go back to normal. All right, so we got some uh, here that we can install on device. I'm sorry. What did you say, Adam? We got some towel roots that we can install on this device. It might work. It might not. Oh. Doubt it. It's running Android 4.4.3, uh, 4. 4. I think, or 4.4.4. 4. 4. Is it running 4.4.4? 4. 4. 4? I believe so. Okay. Um, well, that just kind of put a damper on things, but no harm in trying, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Slash system. Yeah, 4.4. Yeah, 4.4. 4. 4. 4. 4. what? Actually, just 4.4w. 4. 4. <laughs> hmm. Now, I should have an Whatever. app on here that is a launcher. That tower used was a... You don't need a launcher, Adam. You can just launch it. And it uh, how? Um, so install the uh, APK. Yeah. And just say, okay, Google, launch. Okay, Google, launch towel root. Okay, Google. Or just launch towel root. It keeps on removing the word towel. Okay, Google. <laughs> okay, just uh, tap on it once. Launch. Yeah. Uh, tap, so just tap on the uh, the place to bring up the main, the big menu. Scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says launch. Start. Yeah. Ah, there we go. 
All right, make it rain. All right, so it's either making it rain or it just froze up. I'm not really sure which, but we'll find out. And we can install the next one. Speaking of which, you heard uh, GeoRoot's new uh, input? Yeah, I did. Sony tries to sue them, Google hires. I mean, it's amazing. All right, so we're doing a towel route on this device, and it appears to be frozen, which is what you'd expect from a device that won't towel route. Uh, what kind of route methods are available right now, uh, non-stock? Um, I haven't heard anything really... I heard that uh, there was some team. Uh, Dees, do you know anything? Well, you know, Tower Root came out not that long ago, um, but it came out a few weeks before I.O. happened, and I'm pretty sure that I heard that, you know, they had tried to patch it before they, they released it, before they released the devices, you know, at I.O. Hmm. So I don't know if there's anything publicly available that will root these devices. Okay. I know that the G3 guys were getting ready to release something, but I don't know if that's going to actually apply to other devices besides the G3 or if it's going to be LG specific or what. I know they said it would probably work on other devices, but... I don't know if it's LG specific or Qualcomm specific or what, but I thought it was supposed to be released sometime today. All right. Let's see, LG G3 root. So there's a 4.4.2 jailbreak uh, that was released on 7th of June. That's a little bit old. Uh, maybe news results. Um, I need something for the G3, not the G2. Adam, there's the um, IO route. And if it was if there's route? something for the G3, yeah. it would have been so recent that I'm not even sure would start showing up on Google search engines. So what's this about IO route? It looks like it's a route method for the uh, LG G3. Uh, IO root works on 4.4.2, and that's not something we're really interested in, I guess. Uh, I am talking to him. Yes. So. Looking around in here, maybe maybe uh, we'll just go ahead and just do a, a standard Linux permission audit. Uh, this is the result from the ls-al command here. And looks like this is all proper. If we can get access to system, we might be able to do something. Let's check out the data. Yep, no permissions in there. Don't have right access here. System slash bin. Wow, we don't we don't even we can't even get permissions on surface flinger at all. Why would they? It's, that makes no sense. Yeah, it must be some kind of, sort of a new uh, feature of Linux uh, secure secure Linux SE. I've never seen permission denied for listing permissions. <laughs> well, it does make it a little harder to uh, find exploits. Yeah, maybe. Um, 
I don't know. It doesn't seem like it would be something that would be very useful. Uh, I, I mean, if if we've got no read write access, I guess maybe you, know, you can't find a user who would have read write. Gaining root access and especially unlocking bootloaders is going to get to be much, much harder within the next few Android releases, both because of SE Linux and then if you start looking at uh, DM Verity where they're hashing the entire system partition so that um, changing a file on the system partition, if you do somehow get read write, will cause the device not to boot. So buy unlocked or you may be stuck with whatever you end up with. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm not seeing the S permission on anything here. The uh, switch user permission. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, like, you know, run as would be an S R W X R W X or R R W. Uh, yeah, like, you'd at least have read access and execute access for run as. Run as, I believe, offers some kind of uh, special app debugging that allows you to debug as a app user. Huh. Yeah, nothing in here. There was uh, something maybe in slash dev. What? What? Wait, what? What? I what? 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 I I don't understand. I'm in the dev folder and I can't ls. Oh, nice. I I don't get it. Is this maybe maybe if I hit it like ten million times or something, maybe something will paint? Oh my goodness. I've never seen this before. Yeah. There's a lot fewer things that you can get to nowadays between all the permissions and SE Linux. Well, We're, we're not going to be able to do anything unless we find a way to get the, the image for this device. I have permission of even entering slash dev slash block. Oh my goodness. This is... This is... I don't even know what to say. They're taking away Linux, everything that's good about Linux that I like about Linux, at least. Nah. It'll all still be there if you can get root, but until you get root, you can't get to it. Mm-hmm. That's true. Root or system. LG and Samsung release kernel sources. All right, well, we got Brock at least. All right, well, they can't take away Brock. Can they take away Brock? No. They can't. Yeah, okay. I've seen devices where you can't uh, read the command line or the uh, partition list. Well, this thing doesn't have very many processes started on it at all. So let's see what we can find about the uh, init process, process number one. 
Nothing much. ADB is pretty fast on this device. Okay. Um, what did? Hold on. I need a. I need a separator here. There we go. Okay, so the init process has quite a bit of information here. We can't get the kernel parameters from here. Which is kind of what I was hoping to get. If we could get a copy of the bootloader, we could actually do something here. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. This is... I've never seen anything like this. It's safe to say that they really stepped up their game from a security standpoint. Very safe to say that. Um, let's... Uh I wonder something. So, do you remember that LG G root file? Uh, I don't. J case. Uh, wait, which one? The one you downloaded. LG. LG G root. Yeah. Can you unpack that? I could. Uh, what's the deal with that? Oh no, just thinking. Alright, so there's another exploit out there called Rock My Moto. But it requires Dalvik. Are we running with Dalvik or are we running with a uh, Art. Uh, I think they did away with Art. Didn't didn't they deal do away with Dalvik in four point four point four? Or is that no, Dalvik is still in four point four point four. It doesn't go away until L. L. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean that they've done something different with where, but it seems likely that Dalvik is still present. <laughs> So let's check out the settings. We'll go to developer options. And I'm not seeing the option to change between the two. Well, why are you asking that? Does it exploit Dalvik? Well, there's a exploit called... Uh it uh, Rock My Moto. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Rock My Moto. Root for Moto X. Just in case claimed it, huh? Dang, just in case did everything, huh? <laughs> you 
No. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I have checked. Uh, and Android Wear does uh, actually stick with uh, Dalvik right now. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for that Rock My Moto. I'm not seeing it. Uh, let me see if I can find the download it. Um. Chop. No, I'm checking. Uh, I'm checking out the uh, the hangout pad for a little while. Uh, Daniel Ortiz uh, suggested a couple of routes, and I don't think they'll work. Uh, for the gear live teardown. All right. Ugh. Okay. Oh, uh, Daniel, a point. Okay, so this is not a rock my method. Turns out uh, it won't work on the uh, the where because it needs Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because it uh, you essentially establish a Telnet server on um, whatever port. Uh huh. Uh. I, I think we can do that. I I don't think you can, because the uh, wouldn't it be added to the phone? I don't know. Um, wouldn't you be able to uh, put? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, it, it may or may not work. I but. Uh, Telnet, your phone's IP address, push. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and try it. Uh, it's entirely possible that I could... I could uh, make it... Uh, I could reroute 2222 over ADB. ADB forward? Yeah. That might work. Make sure your phone's on Wi-Fi. Rock my motor the power of the SD card. Okay, so we got that rock my motor dot jar onto the device. And now we're going to have to push the SU over as well. And for some reason, it came disconnected. I'm just poking on the file system. They really tighten things up here. Yeah, no joke. It's pretty ridiculous, man. I did think you'd have to go Fort Knox security on a watch. <laughs>
Yeah, no. It's a bit disturbing. It's good and bad. To the typical consumer, it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but for, I agree with that. Uh, you know, for, for anyone who wants to actually unlock the full potential of the device. <laughs> I just can't believe they didn't already uh, go ahead and release a firmware for this device. At least something. You mean the kernel? Yeah, or, yeah, kernel recovery uh, factory image. I mean, isn't it traditional that if you buy a device from the Google Play Store, you can get a factory image the day it's released? No, they, they don't do more. But no, for, the, so for any of the Google Play devices, there's no factory images. Yeah. For any Google Play edition, they don't do factory images. Huh. Which sucks. So, for example, on my Sony, uh, 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 the Ultra, the Google yeah. Play Edition, and I screwed something up. <laughs> I was trying to uh, fix the SD card permissions, and I forgot to uh, allow a file to be executable, and I rebooted the phone. Too bright. <laughs> I couldn't find a... Uh, Factory image. I had to dig around on XDA and I eventually found one. Yeah, um, I'm playing around with uh, with this other root method uh, by J Case, and I'm not seeing anything that would be able to work with this. And actually, now that I look at it, uh, it's probably. Mm, I don't know. It's probably going to end up being a pretty, uh, pretty focused exploit. I could tear it down and take a look at the exploit itself, but I think that would just be a waste of time, and might piss off JK if I did that on on video as well. Um, you know what? You know what is interesting? Do it. What's that? On, on slash proc slash CPU info. What's that? Do a. Uh, cat proc CPU info. Three db. It's actually registering all four cores. It is. Which is uh surprising. It could be the reason that it has such bad battery life as well, from what I've heard. Well, um, it was only advertised as a single core. However. Yeah. The system on a chip is a quad core uh, CPU. So mm. I thought Google may have uh, turned off three of the cores. They're responding. They are there. Which is a little. I mean, you could disable a core and it wouldn't show up under a CPU info. They are there. This means. This means this watch could be actually very serious. Um, little, uh, little beast. If, if, uh, <laughs> I just thinking back to the days of the old Evo that I had on Sprint's micro camera device. It had five thousand. But the You need an external. You'd really want to get an external power source if you were to oh, yeah. use <laughs> four cores on a watch. Well, true. Um. It's possible that they just put them on there and they govern it down so that there's no way to activate those? That's possible. Well, then it wouldn't show up here, though. Um, I, it's just weird. But, hey... I could see Ubuntu being ran in a church on the watch with a VNC server. <laughs> that's, that's just too far, though. Yeah, that is a little bit far. Uh, just poking around looking for something to exploit. 
I'm not fucking... Yeah, nothing. Nothing. I, I'm I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated of Linux. See, when it came to the days of Linux, just playing Linux. I mean, I, I know I know Linux very well, but Linux SE is another animal altogether. I don't even know how to mess with the policies. Um. Whoa. Yeah. Um, okay, try that uh, set and force. <laughs> That's not really going to do much. I Hold on. I, I hope I didn't find what I think I found. Um, PDB pool. I had it on the wrong window. I just tried a weird file. Let me see. If it just means wishing I found something. Or... Alright. I need another Android device. Um, I should have absolutely no shortage of that. I find a, I found an X509 certificate on the in a slash PTC slash security. That OT search up this. If you ADB pull that OTA. For that uh, OTA source file, you can use the ADB pull up. I mean, it's possible that could be used to craft a forged OTA package but, and just sideload it through the uh, stock recovery. That's a uh, now I'm checking it out. I would take uh, I would also take a system dump so never mind that it, it it wouldn't work. No, it wouldn't be worth anything. Yeah. I was hoping. You said you found a key. I might hope so. I think uh, it wasn't what I thought it was. I think we're going to stick to a little bit more hardware here, and uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can find any sort of a UART on this device. Uh, so, unfortunately even if they were using their traditional methods of having a multiplexed USB port like you find on many Samsung devices, uh, there's a company called Int3 who has my hack dock right now, so that is out. L luckily, the hack dock will probably be able to be purchased soon, so for those of you who have Samsung devices, you might want to pick up a hack dock eventually. I don't know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tear this device back down again. I guess I turn it off. It's really unsettling when I have to pop, crack this thing open. It's like it doesn't, it just doesn't feel right doing that at all. Not even the slightest. Yeah. 
I mean, you're always worried you're going to snap something in half. Oh, hey, Adam, heads up. I stopped by Radio Shack the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and normally I don't like buying tools from Radio Shack because, well, their selection's normally not the best anymore. Mm -hmm. I have a tool set for my fix it. That's actually really good. <laughs> huh. I'm shocked that they actually get something really good. Well, what do you mean? What, what kind of a tool set are you talking about? It's uh, specifically designed for mobile devices. Um, my camera again. So that's the tool set right there. Hmm? You open it up, and it actually has a camera so I can actually show this. Let's see if we got a decent selection of... Oh, that's it right there. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I should tell you to keep on talking while I was like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's delayed. I'm still watching you pull apart the watch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the old screwdriver said I carried around in my backpack was just not cutting it. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have some better tools every once in a while. Actually, I got a pretty sweet backpack. This thing fit my System 76 uh, laptop in there, hmm. and a lot more. I actually have like four laptops in here right now. Okay, so I got this thing set up, and I think what I'm going to do is probe around and try to find some operational uh, UARTs. I don't expect to turn up anything now, uh, but we can't find a factory image for this device. We don't have a boot image. Uh, it's running SE Linux at this point, and they pretty much locked down everything they can get their hands on. So my expectation is that we're going to find absolutely nothing while working on this device. All right, so we got a ground, and now we are going to get a probe lead ready. Basically, I'm going to show you this right here uh, yeah. from this camera. And it looks like there is a system dump on XDA. Yeah, system dump is nothing. Oh. Uh, we can ADB pull the system all day. That's not going to help us get anything we need. What we need is we need a kernel image or a bootloader image. Either either of those two images would be very very helpful. Um, so basically what I've got here is I'm just going to be probing around on these points and you're going to be looking at a uh, different uh, angle. Uh, you're going to be looking at the computer itself. So I found these little points right here that I want to test on uh, this. Let me switch over cameras. I found these little points right here. I want to try testing and find it on the board as well. Uh, I've taken out the battery from the back, and I'm just going to kind of lay it on top of where I need it. And those are the pins that supply uh, those two right there are the two pins that get power into the device. And so I'm just laying the battery on top of them, and then I'm just going to press down and turn it on that way while I uh, do that. Let me go ahead and uh, switch you guys over to my terminal. A terminal. And we'll do sudo minicom dash d slash dev slash gty usb zero. I don't know, everyone knows my password. Uh, nine. I'm going to pick the most common of everything here. 
This is a buff pirate, by the way. And Dret, I don't actually have a way to turn this thing on. Um, hold down. Oh. Sorry, right, I can short the pins. The problem is that the buttons are in the back of the unit. Well, the button. What are you doing? Just trying to research threads to find out if there's a root method that All these websites uh, comparing the Samsung Gear live to the Sony Smartwatch 2. Why? Yeah, I don't know, man. They're two completely different things. There we go, there we go, there we go. Whoa, what? You found something? Yeah. Okay, why am I not seeing a monitor? Oh, oh yeah! So we've got some sort of a UART here. I'm holding it on. Again, I'm going to make sure that we don't miss anything. But it is booting Linux. Booting sequence is complete, and I'm not seeing anything up there. Let's see what we got here. We got the, the console. You know what? I need to make this window a lot bigger and try that again.
Uh, so let's try getting this thing booting once again. All right. All right. So we've actually at least got the uh, command line parameters here. Let's see what we got in full. All right, so it starts off, we have the boot log starts off. It says uh, the SPL1 starts, and then it starts checking for the areas on the disk, the scatter load region, and RAM init. Uh, so then power management device init, power management device delta. I'm not sure what the delta means, but apparently that's when it stops doing whatever. So we have start, and then we have a delta. Boot flash in it. So, why would it be doing a boot flash? Uh, could be for the screen or something. I don't know. Boot boot flash in it. Boot boot bootloader flash flash drive and I don't know. Flash memory. Uh, get the hardware revision. Uh, config data. The SBL1 DDR set params. The clock initialization. PM driver initialization, power management. Uh, QPST mode is not set, so that says to me that it is possible to do QPST on the spice, but again, we need a firmware for that. Um, okay, I'm Qualcomm sorry, I had, magic. To, had to slip away for a little bit to get my kids put to sleep, but uh, did you guys make any progress anywhere? Uh, well, uh, you might be on your phone, but can you read those words right there? Mm, not really. You are yes, I'm on my really phone. Looking at, we're looking at you are uh, nothing. Uh, uh, nothing really major here. I'm not seeing anything, but uh, this is definitely some information more than what we had before. Sure. Uh, so uh looks like it initializes the clock. This is all in the SBL, uh, the original SBL, the first SBL right here. Uh, and then it looks like uh, the SBL 2 or 3. I'm not really sure, but the little kernel is uh, started right here at this point right here. Mm -hmm. So it is running LK bootloader, little kernel bootloader. So... Platform initial, platform initialization, target initialization. Uh, check the reason why it restarted, and that was because uh, whatever that is, uh, this restart reason means that I was pressing or moving the power key, or moving the power on and off. Uh, so it checked the power key right here. Uh, this could be a place like the the, the, the power key uh, could affect the way it boots uh, if the power key is pressed. So the very first mention of any kind of power key is at the beginning of the boots, like microseconds in. So uh, time in microseconds, so the log type time in my time microseconds. So that would be 0 0.1 second. About one second in, it's going to check to see if the power key is pressed. And, okay, so if the power key isn't pressed, um, it might... Hmm, I wonder. Uh, remove power, connect power, and hold power key while... Huh. Well, 
there's something here. I'm just gonna keep on going through this log really quick. I just, you know, this is pretty pretty good stuff here. I'm gonna go through it quietly. So it looks like it actually checks to see what USB devices attached. Get attached device. And that be the check for the charger or uh, possibly like for the Samsung file jig. Uh well the jig is stupid. <laughs> so it's it, it isn't going to return the device code when it's connected up, but it could be something along the, the lines of if there is a certain USB ID connected or something like that, then it could change the boot mode. Could it be that it's using power button plus plugged into USB to decide what mode to boot? That's something. Those are two inputs there. Definitely could be. Is USB attached? Is the power button being pressed? So we'll definitely... Uh, I'll, I'll need to check things that can be done without the back unit right now because obviously uh, right now uh, I'm one of the people who are using a, a gear without a battery. Uh, I'm trying to get back to that screen. There we go. The MUIC. Uh, I've seen this before, and I remember that this is important. Oh, geez, no, I've lost it. Uh, just a second. Someone's PMing me. I'm going to check that out. Uh, it looks like a Daniel Ortiz just sent me a zip file about 40 megs in size. I'm not sure what it is. It might be source code or something. Uh... I'm going to ask him really quick. It could be the OTA package. That's 20 megs. Um, <clears throat> I have okay. it. Uh, it's an OTA package. Does it start with FF or one? 45.5 meg. Uh, I'll find out in a second. Yeah, FFP. Aha! Yeah. Bootloader, a boot dot image. That's what we need right there. This is what we need. Thank you very much, Daniel. How come you didn't tell me you found that? But I, I needed this. I didn't. Like we really needed this. You said it, you already had it. Yeah, I downloaded it about thirty minutes ago, but I didn't look at it yet. Oh, jeez, man, this is everything we need. I think. All right, so we got the bootloader. We got the bootloader at least. That's a good thing. Uh, do, it looks like there isn't. We got boot image dot p recovery. Uh, we don't actually have a recovery. Uh, there is no recovery in this package. But that'll be enough, I think. We can just start the. Uh, I think uh, that's all we need. If we got a boot image, we can just kill most of it and just uh, init uh, init. 
uh, TWRP. All right, so uh, I'm going to switch this over. Let me get open with something. Open with bless. All right. And I need to switch this camera over so you guys can see bless. Hmm. I have way too many windows open on my computer, so it's been a while. It's not good. I have entirely too many windows open as well. And I am having problems. I can't even open. For some reason, it's not letting me share my my hex editor here. There we go. All right. So Control F to find, and we want to search for string, text, and OEM. Uh, OEM unlock. Let's just continue to search for OEM. There we go. Use fastboot OEM. Okay, so we've got we've got fastboot commands here. This is why I wanted a copy of the bootloader to start with. Adam, what hex editor are you using? Uh, bless hex editor. Huh. I like that. I'll just use the terminal hex edit. <laughs> so, here are the commands supported by the device. OEM enable console. Aha! I, I think we need that. That would be awesome if we can get... OEM enable console. console. Really? We can get a console on this. And I would assume it's a mood, mode zero, a uh, user zero console. Uh, okay, so this is that off mode charger. Uh, off mode charge zero, off mode charge one. Okay, we'll just leave that on for now, but uh, I was talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, the uh, continue OEM enable console. Disable console is probably the normal one. We did the device info. Uh, Pre-flash, I don't know what that is, OEM. Charger screen, disable charger screen. OEM off mode charging, select display panel. OEM select display panel. But that's interesting. All right, so I'm going to uh, get this thing kind of back together and do a fast boot OEM enable console because that seems like what we need right now. If we can get a, a, a console on this thing, especially if it's a root console, uh, that that would be helpful. I, I would... hope I hope it is, but <laughs> yeah. Well. A lot of the times, uh, what they do on these devices is they will disable most of the OEM functions, all the useful ones that you know we find useful at least, and uh, you end up with a device that just isn't that much fun to play with. All really right, what we so. use for Samsung to get off their lazy duffs and release the kernel source. Maybe one second. Let me call my brother. He's going to try to call me. That would be too easy if they did that. It wouldn't give us any challenge. All right, so sudo, let's see if this works here. Sudo fastboot OEM 
enable console. Okay, we got console enable. All right, and let's do sudo fast boot OEM disable charger screen. Okay, and now we can do that charger screen. Probably just has to do with whether or not it boots into off mode charging or not. You're right. It probably just does, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to see if it'll if it would work or not. If we can get any other info, maybe the uh, charger off charger screen uh, could uh, display additional info instead of the charger screen. Sorry, I got in the way. All right, so charge screen enabled false. Now, if we went way back in this uh, video, you'd see the charge screen was true. So we are making we are making some changes here. Whether or not they're good, I don't know. Pseudo fast boot reboot. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull the back cover off this unit again. Oh, come on, dude. It does what it's told. God. Ugh. I just feel like I'm breaking things when I pull that off. It just doesn't feel right. God. Adam, when you're in there, how's the rubber seal <coughs> around the Do you think that's going to fall apart? The seal? Yeah. Looks good to me. I don't know. I don't don't think it'll fall apart or anything. It's just uh, some moisture detectors inside. What's that? It's just the moisture detectors inside. I'm just curious on how good that seal is. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks decent. I don't know. Wouldn't have anything bad to say about it. There we go. There we go. We got the console up. So uh, we actually did manage to enable console. And we're still getting debug information. So there we go. Uh, so now we've got a full console going, and we're looking for a root. Hopefully we can get root. Hopefully we can get root. I wish I had more hands here. I'm not seeing root yet, and I would assume if there was a console that we could actually use, it would have already popped up root. But here's the thing. We might need to actually get in there with a, uh, a hard UART wire, solder it down. I want to go through this log here and see what we can see. Maybe maybe missed uh, the root prompt somewhere or something. I don't know. Hmm. Generally speaking, when you have a console, eventually it'll tell you, "Hey, you got a root a root terminal here too." It might have come up in the middle or the end of one of the lines.
I suppose it might be a good idea to uh, make this full screen and get a good log on on a console on a whole start on a whole boot. All right, there we go. Uh, that is the first 30 seconds to the log. I'm going to go ahead and paste bin this, and I'll post the link somewhere. I don't know. Where's a good place to post a link? Paste bin. Okay, I'm going to put it in paste bin and then post the link, but where's a good place to post the link? Oh, on the event thread. That's a good idea. So, copy... For some reason, Google uh, Chrome doesn't want to make doesn't want to go doesn't want to let me switch Windows right now, so I'm switching over to Firefox for that. Paste in dot com. All right, so I'll paste all of this in there. Hopefully, it'll accept it. Samsung Gear. Live full UART submit. And <laughs> we got it. There we go. Um, I'm going to let you guys take a look at this. Uh, all right. On the event page, I just posted up a UART log. And I'll also put it here in the chat as well for you guys here in the chat. You guys can take a look at that. <laughs> and I'm taking a look at it too because this is some uh, really interesting information. So we got the reason the device powered on. A lot of interesting information here. Uh, it looks like okay. Uh, it, it looks like it is using the the Samsung um, Jig device, where we might be able to get UART through the USB port as well. Uh, as you can see here, it is looking for the. ADC jig UART on right here. Um, the uh, that would be a 301 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, so that's that's good to know. We could probably get uh, USB debugging going that way. All 
or rather not USB debugging, but uh, UART debugging without having to tear down the device. Uh, you need a hack dock to do that. Or a uh, Samsung uh, Anyway jig. Adam, just one other thing. If you look at the uh, pace bin, uh -huh. uh, 171. Yeah. It's also referring to the uh, uh, Mac CPUs as four. Yeah, look at that. Um, it looks like, to me, we're probably not going to be able to get the uh, uh, root UART on this. Um, I, I believe that is code 8. I don't really remember. Uh, I think it was either 0, 7, or 8, and it looks like they've only thrown uh, flags uh, user debug 1 and 3, uh, 3 and 1. Um, I think you need to do like 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 or something like that. So they're only giving us levels 3 and 1. So all four yeah. processes are being activated. What's that? All four processes are actually being activated. Really? Yeah, look at line 259. This is... Because all the news sites were saying that it's only going to be running one core, but it's not. Huh. All a total of four processors activated, 153.60 yeah. BOGO MIPS brought so up using, four. So brought up four. Scaling. What's that? It's using scaling, but that that's expected. Yeah. Um, I would assume that if we could actually get access to the kernel source, like Samsung should be already providing, and uh, uh, we could work with it a little bit. All right, so CPU thread, uh, CPU thread, CPU two. All right, so yeah, they are uh, CPU thread uh, bringing up or brought up uh, brought up four CPUs, uh, total of four processors activated. Hold on, let me let me bring this up in the window where I'm I'm looking at this. Uh, yeah. Point one one zero nine two point one one zero nine two. Zero one zero yeah there we go. So the CPUs are brought up four brought up four CPUs right here. Total of four processors activated one hundred fifty three point six zero BOGO MIPS, which is rather low for those processors, but it may not be throttled up. Uh, the uh, CPU also all CPUs started in SVC mode. Okay, uh, let's see what it does with those processors now. That's what we need to look at. Yeah, that's why I'm looking down in the log. Uh, towards the end of the log, it was bringing up CPUs, and, and I think it looked like it was uh, doing things. It looks like it's adjusting the uh, voltage. The voltage ceiling's on a few of them, but that's not abnormal. Denied search for boot animation. So I guess uh, Samsung's kernel or Samsung something or other uh, hasn't adjusted uh, to SD Linux. <laughs> I don't know. I am really interested in soldering on a couple of UARTs to this device and putting it back together so that way we have USB access in UART. I'm 
going to fire up my soldering iron and take care of that next. Solder some wires to this device. Interesting. SCSI SCSI Media Chart Changer Device? Driver? Yeah, I saw that. I don't think it's... Wow. Why would they even have that? That makes no sense. But look how many partitions the, uh, the MMC is in. On line uh, 713. What's the timestamp on it? Just tell me that. Three dot nine uh, nine four six two two four. Three dot nine four six two two four. All right. MMC block zero P one P two. All right. So SPL one two three modem. Uh, probably a parameter partition. Okay. So kernel recovery. Oh jeez, I don't even know. Well, why would they have that many partitions? If you look at the uh, over-the-air update script in the install recovery, yeah, um, maybe let's find out what some of those are. Um, oh, it's one by name. Eh, without figuring out. I'm looking for it. I don't. I'm not seeing it. it I guess it, it's been a while since I've done one of these. What's well, one by name? I, I don't see the uh, the script though. No, it's 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 uh in the uh, recovery the update script or the inst I'm sorry, I can't even talk today. Uh, Meta inf? No, um, where did it go? Okay. Yeah, okay, there we go. Meta inf dot com slash com slash Google slash Android. All right, that is a long freaking script. I'll share this on the screen. Yeah, that... I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right one because I've got six windows open. <laughs> Okay, so we're applying patches and then deleting files and then applying more patches. All right, so slash system slash bin extract file bootloader. All right, so there we go. Uh, misc a boot rpm sbl dbi tz apn hlos. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Really nothing of any value there. <laughs> no, nothing of any value there at all. Uh, I think what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to soldering on this. What I want to do is I want to solder on a couple of UARTs to here. And... Uh, in order to do that, I'll be right back. I need to get some water because uh, my sponge is completely dry and I need that for soldering. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back in. Um, what? 
said you should see a doctor about that. My sponge being dry? Yeah. Hmm. Alright, so after we get the UART on here, um, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, take the image that uh, Daniel sent me, and I'll go ahead and uh, modify that so that we get all the boot flags. I think that, that might work. And then we can just use uh, fast boot boot to boot that image, and yeah, everything should be hunky dory. I think we got a handle on this now. It's starting to look pretty bleak, but uh, I don't know, man. If we can get this thing to boot up in brute mode, it should be squared away. So, soldering on some of the smallest wire I've got, which is like, like uh, I don't know, smaller than 40 gauge. It's just a magnet wire, single stranded. Pinning these wires is really difficult. It's like threading a needle, kind of. It's so, so small. It's like, I don't know. Actually, it's more like threading a hair. I had to use something. The idea here of tinning this is basically um, have to get all the uh, have to get the uh, the shielding off, which is like a very very thin piece of plastic, insulating plastic, and until you get the shielding off, it won't ever stick. Now the size of this wire it doesn't really require tinning per se but I am effectively tinning the wire.
It is very, very thin wire. I don't even know if they have a gauge for this, but if I was to guess, I would say like it's somewhere around like, I don't know, 60, 70. All right, there we go. All right, now we've got two wires hooked up to the gear, and I think we can put this thing back together. Now, of course, uh, I think it goes without saying I voided my warranty in multiple ways here. But, uh, this just kind of makes it more obvious from the outside. started off by uh, adding water to the strip just to see if it would turn pink. And now we're adding wires to the unit. You're you're improving it. Yeah. One thing I must give them credit for, though, they uh, they did a really cool uh, job of uh, grounding the outside of the unit. So, at least with the cover off, it makes it pretty easy to get ground. And I suppose uh, with the cover on, we won't really need ground uh, because it's grounded to the computer. All right, now if this worked, uh, we should be able to get some UR to cross here. I'm not sure which one it would be. Is it this one? Restart the device. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm not getting anything on here. Okay. 
to the test of them before you sealed up the case. Yeah. Should have. I'll agree with you there. <laughs> the thing is, it's just not easy at all to uh, turn the device on. It's not easy at all to turn the device on without uh, the button connected. This is the boring part, I guess. All right, there we go. case back on the thing just because I can't really press the power button very easily with the case off and test it. So we can just uh, go ahead and put it on and test it out, see if it worked. If it worked, great. If it didn't, take it back off. Okay. Now, okay, it's not working. Uh, but now I'm kind of wondering if my bus pirate's even working. I've had it before where it would lock up after a long use. So I'll go ahead and disconnect it and get back in and reset it up. Three, nine, one, 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 one. Three, yes. Okay. And it should ADB reboot. Okay. Well, it's not that. I don't know why, but it's not working.
try uh, repositioning the wire a little bit. Hope it's not grounding out on the case. That's kind of what I'm dreading. If it's grounding out on the case, there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do. Aside from poking a hole in the case, which, would, aside from pointing the warranty, that would also uh, open it up to water damage. Yeah. Okay. But they are in Three need fingernail polish. What? All right, there we go. And I'm sure that's a solid connection. Actually, before I... Uh, oh, can I? I lost my uh, I lost my hangout on the Mac. I need that for my microscope. Normally, I'd criticize anyone for using a Mac, but <laughs> you're using it for casual. Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's also a very small computer. It's a Mac Mini. I know. <laughs> so, you know, uh, being that it's a Mac Mini, it doesn't take up any space or anything like that, so... Didn't I send you one? Yeah. All right, so I would say, oh, I never joined the Hangout. All right, there we go. So those two little tiny connections look great. And... That's basically all we're trying to do is get those little connections to work. So once we get those connections to work, everything will be fine. Just wanted to point that out just so you can see what I was doing right here. All right, so hopefully I can close this thing and it's not going to ground out. And what I can do to prevent that is actually lay down a little piece of tape. Um... Yeah, so I have some tape over here. I'm just going to lay down some tape along the edge of it, and that should prevent it from grounding.
Let's try that again. There we go. We got you, Art. Let's see how much we got and if we can pass data in. All right, so there we go. Got a hardwired UART into the device, and it appears that we don't have a actual console. I'm pressing all kinds of buttons, and we're getting absolutely nothing. But that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do ADB reboot bootloader. Oh, that's interesting. It's nice how they put the instructions inside of UART. Like, you can swipe down to select and, and all. That's great. That's great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that, Samsung. Had it in the one place no one will look. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it says anything on the screen, does it? Uh, it does on the LG. I don't know about the Samsung. No. It, okay, yeah. Okay, it does here. It does, yeah. I, I just didn't see it before. I think this is actually a message specifically for you. Like well, this is... I'm pretty sure these are debug messages. They use them, you know, when they're making the stuff, when they're making it all work. work. So what's this? Uh, reset port change. Reset port change. Um, hmm. Interesting. Just taking a look at this really quick before we uh, go on. So if I swipe down, what what kind of uh, change do we get here? Oh, nice. Hey, this thing. Hey, Dees, are you looking at this, man? It's registering all the touch events. I'm just tapping the screen in various areas. What about a swipe? Wait. What is a what, what's okay, that so, a and an R? So that was a swipe right there when it when it like fully it redrew the entire menu. So instead of just like modifying the stuff that's on screen, they're actually like killing the entire menu and redrawing it on the screen bit by bit. It looks like. Uh, for a system that primitive, um, you know, there's nothing really. Powerful about fast food. That's probably the easiest way to do things. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so touch event. So it it doesn't look like they're actually like you can't really see any swipes going on. I guess press and release. So you got the P and the R. So based on what the start of the press and the so if you just tap once. So it's here, P and an R in the same area. Yeah. So they're using these numbers to determine whether or not uh, it's supposed to be a swipe or a touch. Correct. If okay. you take, if you just um, the X and the Y, obviously, get a touch would be the same place. It is a uh, swipe. Yeah. Um, something starting and ending in different places. Yeah. Which makes sense. All right, so the next thing we got to do is uh, work on the kernel. Alright, so I'm going to share another window and we're going to work in here for just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. Uh, you what? 
Somebody thought they were in Windows for a second. Thought I was in Windows? CLS, I saw that. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh... I work on a lot of different systems. I work on Windows at work and Mac and Linux at home. I actually have Windows installed here, too. I'm looking for that download I just got from, uh... Just a minute ago. I need that uh, that archive again. There we go. The FFA thing. Got it? Yeah, I got it. So I need the recovery. No. Uh, I need... There was a boot.image somewhere in here. That was in... Uh uh, was it? Oh darn! This is a boot.image.p. I wonder if that's a full boot.image. It's large enough to be. Well, it's a patch, so it's not. It's not. No. But these are patches. If you look at the patches, you're watching it. So it's not a complete file. It's not a complete file. Uh, it's a very large batch <laughs> by patch standards. Yeah. I didn't even know you could patch a doggone uh, block. I've seen code for it before in uh, AOSP recovery. And I've seen comments and so forth. You know, they they do binary patches of files that they're updating for one. And I think I saw some comments and some code pushed in to support doing, you know, differential updates of boot and recovery, and so that you don't have to include the entire full size image. Doggone! But a, uh, I didn't even think it was possible to. I mean, how do you how do you differential patch a, a block device? Well, you can uh, probably write to it using a lot of your standard tools. Yeah, but even yes. a DD, you can try the DD that thing. I don't, I didn't know there was a way to patch with DD. Well, you can use your standard like C utilities like uh, F open, F, F, you know, read write to read and write to block devices on at least a lot of devices. So what now? They say it's like they released some source code. Well, even if we had source code, we don't have the RAM disk. You don't have to have their RAM disk. You can supply your own RAM disk. It well, might be a little bit of a guessing game to try and figure out what all the proper, you know, addresses and so forth. But since you've got UART access, we could probably get that from the UART logging or, you know, at least we can figure out which one is wrong and try and fix it, but, you know, we need the kernel source. Uh, yeah, well, there isn't any kernel source available for this yet. Yeah. Um, now, uh, about that DTB image thing, uh, since it sounds like you're in a quieter environment, what do you know about oh, yeah, DTB? The kids are all, the kids are all asleep. What were you asking? What do you know about DTB? Uh, different uh, acronyms used for it, but you know, it's basically most people I've seen to it is uh, device tree blob. The eventual goal is to get you to a point where you can use the same kernel source across multiple devices and all the device specific stuff for things like the panel and the touch screen. That all goes in the device tree part of it so that you know a manufacturer would hopefully only have to patch one set of kernel source for all their devices instead of having to keep all these separate repositories for all their different devices. So how does that affect how it boots though? 
Well, the the bootloader is going to, you know, normally a bootloader would extract the kernel and then the current and pass to the kernel where the RAM disk was and and the so on and so forth. Well, the, as an extra step, the bootloader would extract the de, the device tree portion of it and pass that to the kernel, kind of like it would with the RAM disk, so that the kernel can read from the the DTB. Okay, uh, so I'm looking here. And I see found and appended flattened device tree sprat. Found and appended flattened device tree sprat. Uh, device tree hardware revision doesn't match the board. And then it found one that matches the board. Right. Uh, so we need, s I guess, do you know how to write a DTB that would uh, have a MSMID? that matches this number that I've got like highlighted on my screen right now? Uh, you know, I've never really had to mess with uh, modifying a DTB. I suppose we could try and... What might be interesting is to try and fast boot, boot one of your uh, other images and see what kind of UART output you get from that. All right, let's try that. Um, I'm gonna go poke I'll around go at some of my uh, DTBs that I've got floating around on my hard drive here and see if. Uh, All right, uh, I'll I'll send a message to you in Hangouts. Okay. All right, uh, Nick. Nick was continuously muting me, so I removed him from the call. Um... D's. All right, so uh, I sent you a link to that uh, seventeen hundred device tree matches. Uh, something, and uh, we'll go ahead and see what happens when I boot an invalid DTB. If the bootloader will even let you boot it. So we've got in download. We have. Open recovery for the XT1032. We're going to do a pseudo fast boot boot, and if you look at your screen now, you'll see what happens. I've got to put in my password. All right, so. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, unable to find suitable device tree for device model info 00008. I, hmm. I kind of wonder, is that just like a header thing? Is that like something that we can just like modify? Well, DTB usually ends up containing a whole bunch of different separate little pieces that they combined together into the DTB. Well, if I can change the... I don't know. I, I, I think if we could just get a half-ass operating kernel, it would work. So I'm going to do a search for 0, 0, 0, 
zero 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 nine one. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. Oh God, there's a lot of them. Well, that's what I was trying to tell you is, is that the DTV is usually made up of a whole bunch of separate little littler pieces that they push all together and then combine into a DTV image. That's sometimes half the fun is sometimes different manufacturers do it slightly differently. Hmm. Samsung would never do anything differently. Uh, it looks like after it tries one board for DTB, it then tries 0000008. 000 so it's possible there's some sort of a common uh, thing for that. Is there a reference board for the uh, Snapdragon 88, whatever that was? 8226? Yeah. I have no idea. Eighty-two twenty-six. So I'm checking it out on Wikipedia. All right, so of course Moto G, um, maybe maybe a Samsung Galaxy Tab, Prestigio, LG L90 Dual, Nokia Lumia. Um, I'll try getting that uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 one. I'll try uh, getting a copy of TWRP for that. I don't know if we support that one or not. Samsung makes so many different tablets now, it's insane. Oh, uh, it looks like all this pretty much all the Galaxy Tab ten. Team Win. All the Galaxy Tab four, I'm sorry. No Galaxy Tab 4. No Pad Phone E. Hey, why don't you support the Nokia Lumia 630, huh? Do you want to know how many different emails I get each week from somebody that wants me to support some random device? <laughs> yeah. No, the Nokia Lumia, though, that's a Windows phone. I think somebody ported Tor for the Nokia X, but that is an Android-based. Yeah. Hey, I mean, they did put uh, Torp on, uh, what was it, the... I can't remember the name of it now. It was like the HTC Evo 4G, but it ran Windows Mobile 6.5. They ported Android to that thing and done all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't. You. I'm like going through these. I'm running out of options here. Uh, the Moto G looks like the only TWRP supported device yeah. out of all of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Sony Xperia. M2, I don't know. I think that's about it, man. Uh, I don't think we have many more options left to explore. 
I could try another random uh, Snapdragon 400. What's the reference platform for the Snapdragon 400? Reference design. Sony Xperia M2. The S4 Mini. No. All right, let's, let's see here. Let's find out what the Snapdragon has to say about the device. Sony Xperia T3 Lenovo Yoga. You know, I've never done a Lenovo device yet. Sony Xperia M2. Uh, ZTE. Have you got any ZTEs at all? No. Got a few Huawei's, but. I've never done them myself. Somebody else always ports those and gives me the device configuration files. For the Galaxy S4 Mini. You have Somebody might have done that one, but it wasn't me. Galaxy S3 Mini. We do have a Galaxy S3 Mini support. Code name on that one, I think, is Golden something golden. or another. Yep. Yeah. Golden. I don't remember. Oh, Sony Xperia. Be. Xperia T3? No. I haven't done a T3. I think that one's too new. So it looks like uh, Moto G... S3 Mini, S4 Mini, uh, three different ZTE devices, and Sony Xperia T are going to be the uh, best choices, I think. All right, so I found the uh, S3 Mini Golden uh, one. I didn't know that was Golden. Um, over on... Um, holy cow, man. Wish I, I wish I had, uh, I wish I'd shared this window I'm using because uh, uh, Team Win site it was just like freaking out totally on me. Good times. Yeah. All right, so Team Win site. Uh, I'm about 99% sure that Golden does not have a DTB in it. Yeah, I'm going to share this with you. I think you need to see this. Can you see that, these? Yeah. Yeah, it does that every once in a while. I have to hit refresh. I don't do the website design. Okay. I got people for that, I guess. Yeah, I'm not much of a designer myself. There's people that are better at that stuff than I am that do it for me. Well, that's weird. The Galaxy Golden Tar file is empty. <laughs> uh, I think somebody mentioned that to me one time. But it, uh, Golden doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a DTB, so it's not really going to help you. Probably. It doesn't. Uh, you're welcome to try it if you want, but there's no DTB in the device files. I'll have to check my build script on the uh, Golden and see, but 
I don't think it's all that popular to buy. Maybe I'm wrong. As is always the case, the devices that I actually own get the best support, and Golden is not one of my, not part of my device list. So, yep, we got uh, remote DTB not found. DTB is incorrect. Does not have mm -hmm. appended DTB. Yeah, you can have the DTB separate, and sometimes it can be just tacked on at the end of the kernel. So I may be checking both places for it. Man, I can't believe they use like these like half images for a kernel. I mean, really? The patch? Uh, yeah. Well, you got to think, you know, if you got, especially when you're dealing with a cell phone that's on a cellular network and maybe you got a couple hundred thousand or a million of them mm -hmm. and everybody wants to download that fancy new Android update that comes out, if you can save a couple megabytes for uh, over a million phones on a cellular data network, that's going to be huge. I guess so. They're in a uh, third world country as well. I decided to take a look at this uh, APN HLOS uh, partition. Do you know what APN HLOS is? Not off the top of my head. Yeah, um, Aren't APNs the GSM, uh, GSM cell networks? Okay, but uh, here, take a look at this. Um, can you see that? Um, yeah. MS DOS 5.0. Uh, yeah, it's a FAT16 file system. So APN stands for access point names, and it's used for GSM uh, carriers. So I wonder if they're just using a generic something for, I don't know. That makes no sense for that to be there. Unless it means something else in that context. All right, so I'm opening up APNHLOS, and it's just got a bunch of binary files in it. Uh, I got it up on screen now. I was kind of hoping to find a kernel or something in here. You found part of a kernel. <laughs> yeah, not exactly. Not in there, but you did find part of a kernel. Yeah, I found part of a kernel. <laughs> That's for sure. Just not the parts I needed. Yeah, not really finding what I need here.
Not digging this new update system. I didn't build it for you. The HLOS seems to stand for High Level Operating System. Hmm. Wonder what kind of high level operating system we're talking about. I do believe I'm out of ideas. Yeah, it's fun when you've got an unlocked bootloader, but you still can't do anything with it. Yeah, yeah it just feels like I'm getting gypped here, you know? Uh, you got your Nexus 5 handy? Yeah, I do. You want to see something cool? Sure. Hang on a second. It'll take me a couple minutes to get it uploaded, but it's something we've been working on for a little while. Oh, wait. Actually, I'm sorry. My wife's using my Nexus 5. Uh oh. I Do you don't. have a Nexus 7 2012? Yeah. Hey, Adam. Yeah. Idea. We tried to uh, fast boot Chainfire's uh, CF auto route. Yeah. Should I try it? Yeah. Is the CF auto route a kernel for this? Well, if we. Well, let me see something. Does he have one available for this? Well, I don't know if it's available for that, but what if we try for a G? Well, no, G. That wouldn't work. The DTB thing. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Not there. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything on there for these ones. It will. This watch is getting very, very hot in fast boot mode. You said it had that, uh, the menu where you could swipe up and down and all that? Yeah. It's probably pegging the CPU. Probably. You're right. That's exactly what's going on. It's just sitting there just wasting cycles. So, uh, what do you got here, Deez? I'm, uh, I'm ready for it. Yeah, I have to upload it, and I've got my slow internet here, but... Uh, Big Biff, Matthew uh, Kreitz has been working on it for a little while, but uh, we've been trying to port uh, MTP over to recovery, hmm. which is kind of cool. It works in Linux, but not in Windows yet. So I gotta finish compiling it here for you and then upload it. Uh, I'm using Linux. Yeah, you'll be able to see how it works in Linux, even though it's not 
100% working in Windows yet. It sort of works, but Windows uses some different functions in MTP in order to transmit some of the information about the files and the properties about the files, and the MTP implementation in Linux is a little bit different. It doesn't use those functions as much. So, well, What is this? Give me an that. idea of what we're talking about here. What? Is this an MTP uh, client for TWRP, basically? Yeah. Oh. Oh, cool. He's been working on it since uh, probably around... He sort of started on it, and then he tried a different approach. And then he went back to it. He's been working on it probably roughly since a little bit after XDA DevCon last year. But that means he didn't that have a whole lot of time to work on it each night, but we're, we're getting pretty close. Would that mean that there's full access to the file system from MTV? Theoretically, we could give you access to absolutely everything instead of just what's available in storage. The problem is, is that as far as I know, MTP doesn't implement anything that would allow you to set things like SE Linux contacts or file permissions. It would be dangerous. So even if we gave you access to things like your system partition, you still wouldn't be able to use it that well. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. Cause you upload something and you can't change the permissions. You could uh, work the... Yeah. You could always and implement it with an SFTP client like BusyBox. Oh, that would be awesome. Or even you, Telnet. These were you at, uh, at XTA DevCon last year? Yeah. Yes, uh, I was. So I guess I did run into you. <laughs> Right. Maybe not. He was out playing Ingress a lot. You know, that's not a lot something of about a hundred months in Montaditos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, drinking beer and playing Ingress. We did. We had some fun, Cheap didn't we? Spanish beer. You know, Adam, I was in New Orleans uh, back in uh, February. Yeah. Meet up with some glass owners. Mm. That was a long drive, by the way. I drove from Miami. <laughs> but uh, we spent the whole time playing English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what happens whenever phone nerds get into the same uh, the same room or something. You know, we all bust out our phones and start walking in a group and playing English. I drive twenty one <laughs> hours playing English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've traveled uh, six hundred miles to meet each other. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's play some English. On Bourbon Street. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That 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 is an excellent location too. I mean, all of those portals are just they're just all over the place. I've never been to Bourbon Street, so I was like, I had to take in all the sites and play Ingress. Yeah, it wasn't that productive. Unique portal visits and unique portal captures. Oh yeah. Got to earn those badges. Okay, here comes the link. You'll just want to fast boot boot that. All right. Go ahead and do that. And I would generally recommend that you don't necessarily share the link, because while it's mostly functional, it's not in any kind of a state that you would want to use on a regular basis. All right, so we're booting the image now. You probably want to switch over to your uh, computer screen. Mm hmm. Because there won't be uh, anything that will show up on the, the Team Win Recovery screen. It'll all be on your computer. There we go. Hey, look at that. So let's see here. We've got, oh, nice. Internal storage, DSIM. So this is like uh, my SD card here. Yep. What is USB OTG and why does it have zero megabytes of storage? 
It's still a work in progress. USB OTG would be a USB thumb drive attached, which would kind of defeat the purpose because you wouldn't be able to have it plugged into your computer at the same time then. Unless you have a tablet with a uh, two USB ports. In the final release, I'll probably set it up so that we're only displaying devices that are actually present and mounted on the on there instead of all possible storage locations. Well, you should be able to, uh, you know, copy files to and from, rename, all that kind of stuff. But you know, you want to be kind of careful because you never know what could go wrong. So if you've got something you're you care about on there. You might not want to mess around with it too much at this point. So hypothetically, if you had a micro SD card in there too, it would show up just as another, uh, another drive. I, I know the next step is to have a micro USB, but I'm sorry, a um, uh, micro SD card, but looks like it's having problems uh, copying. I uh, dragged and dropped uh, CF Auto Root to untitled folder. And I'm not sure, but it maybe maybe because there's a space in the name, I don't know. Like I said, we're still it's still a work in progress. I've done some testing on it, but you know we're still we want to get it working in Windows too, and and uh, finish out the rest of the implementation. But it'll be nice in the long run for uh, you know we've got all these devices have the emulated storage, so you can no longer do USB mass storage mode. And for people that have trouble using things like ADB to push and pull files from their device, you know, just being able to plug it in and have it work might come in handy. Let me try this one more time. It's also worth noting that Linux's uh, implementation of MTP isn't necessarily perfect either, so... Yeah. Alright, so let's try this again. We'll do it faster this time. New folder. Uh, error creating new folder. It doesn't like it if you try and create a new folder and there's already a folder on there that's called Untitled Folder. Ah, that that's necessarily our fault. I, it's more than likely Linux's fault. But I'll be perfectly willing to take the blame for it if it's uh, our fault. Well, that's freaking beautiful, Dees. I mean, it's not it's not actually copying anything yet, but you can definitely list it's usable. I mean, you can see what's on the internal storage. It's a start. It's a start. Uh, I have a mistake you, uh, assuming you can recommend, uh, SDP files over in, uh, with Java, you can possibly use something like this as casual. <laughs> Just one of the files process it builder. Well, I think, uh, more of what I'm interested in, in, uh, Java is inter, inter, oh, jeez, what, someone decided they wanted a video call me. Um, so I think what I'm more interested in uh, with Casual is to have a uh, interaction with other programs, uh, such as you know like uh, the the Casual website and TWRP. I've actually got a set of custom classes I've been working on for a while now. Dees, did I ever show you the uh, TWRP interfaces uh, for from Casual? Uh, I think I know you mentioned them to me some. I don't know that I've. Uh... I think you sent a screenshot maybe at one point. Hmm. Well, let me just browse on over here really quick because uh, there, there is some pretty cool stuff here. Um, it, you can actually uh, use Casual to generate a TWRP script from uh, nothing but Java code, but I'm going to be int I'm going to be making a, a whole class uh, for for Casual uh, as far as uh, uh, Casual scripting commands go, so you'd send like uh, you send like TWRP do this, TWRP do that, um, and yeah, it's uh, some pretty cool stuff. Hold on. At some point, I'd like to get to the point where uh, 
you can interrupt the, the GUI if there's not an operation running via some kind of like ADB shell type command or so forth and uh, kick it over into something that's like the open recovery script mode mm -hmm. where you could just send it open recovery script script commands via like an ADB shell type interface so that you could interact with it via a computer without having to use the touch screen. And then something like casual then would be able to interface with twerp and uh, run various commands from the computer without having to do weird dirty hacks. Alright, so what I've got here is uh, basically uh, this is the casual implementation of Open Recovery Script here. Um, so mm -hmm. basically in Java what we do here is we create a string builder object, you, you instantiate a new script basically, uh, right. And you would say like script dot mount system uh, script dot wipe data script dot uh, append, and then uh, take that, and then you could put that into the TWRP communications class right here, uh, where mm -hmm. we have ways to uh, reboot TWRP if TWRP is installed. TWRP. So like you know, first thing you want to do is you want to check is TWRP running. And this uses that little thing that, that you showed me, uh, where mm -hmm. if TWRPs are running, there's always going to be that slash temp slash recovery dot log. Right. Um, so scanning it for containing twerp. Right. Because the temp slash recovery log is true of pretty much all recoveries. Right. So if uh, in order to run a TWRP script, I just showed you we make that little open recovery script. And uh, right. that object goes in right here. You'd run the TWR script against the script object, and what it'll do is reboot the reboot TWRP. Uh, it will uh, write a file to uh, the disk, um, which disk location is defined up above. Uh, right. Then uh, 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 the, it, it basically it takes the script and writes it to the location on this disk, pushes the recovery script over to the device at a specific location and then uh, restarts TWRP again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty uh, complete thing. I just need to get it all together so that it actually uh, has, like, associated commands with it. So you could write a casual script, and it would just send it all over. Right. And, uh, I definitely need more of the open recovery script. I, I went through your documentation, and... I pulled out the commands that I could find. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more in there that... Uh, yeah, there's there's a fair amount of commands. I need to probably at some point go through and revamp some of our documentation. It's just a matter of finding time to do it all. Yeah. Yeah, time is always a problem. And uh, speaking of time, we've been in here like four hours now. Um... We got a lot done today, I think. Uh, we've got UART output on the device. Uh, we have received a UART log, uh, turned on debugging, found the fastboot command for that. Um, later on, I'll be able to tell if this will actually work with the hack doc and you won't have to actually solder anything to this. For now, soldering is required if you wanted to get UART output on this device. We discovered that this device is actually all four cores and not just one as was previously told. And that is especially uh, noticeable if you are in the bootloader mode where it is continuously spooling up what seems like all four processors. I mean, this thing is seriously hot in bootloader mode. It would surprise me if the bootloader was actually multi-threaded and actually hitting all four cores, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was pegging one core full-time. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It would be kind of weird if they had gone multi-threaded in a simple bootloader. It would surprise me if the bootloader supported multi-threading. <laughs> well, I don't know. In Samsung, they wasted their time with TouchWiz. Why not multi-threaded bootloader? <laughs> Maybe so. Did you actually verify that it was using all four cores in Android? 
Yeah, uh, we have the, uh, the the log showing that all four cores are activated and all four cores are uh, put into the same modes. Um, Fair. They're not disabled, they're actually running. So, you know, disabling uh, some of those threads, uh, some of those uh, cores would probably be a good way to save some battery. But we don't have a kernel to work with, so there's not really much we can do. No. Nope. It'd be kind of cool to be able to, if you could get it to set up to rotate between cores too. So even if you were only running two cores at a time, you could rotate them around a little bit so that uh, you keep each individual core cooler. Oh yeah, I think that's what uh, what Linux generally does. What Ubuntu does. I would hope so. Uh, pretty sure I've seen that before. Uh, in a visualized tree. Yeah, right here on the system monitor. Uh, I guess it's not very apparent right now, but when the processors uh, go like pretty much idle, you'll see just one of them at a time. Like right now, all four are pretty much following the same trends. But you'll see just one at a time, just going up and then down and all. But yeah, that's yeah. what we want for these uh, Android Wear devices: is to have the same type of monitoring that the um, uh, same type of uh, process utilization that we get on the Linux desktop, of course. So I think that's going to be about it for today. Uh, hope you guys had some fun, learned some stuff. Very yeah, good times. Time. A lot of fun. All right, so I guess we're going to sign off now, and uh, I'll go ahead and annotate this thing tomorrow. Um, you have a good night, guys. See you later. Late.